Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro and recently you saw that we made a short video stating that this device, the Poco X3 Pro and the K20 Pro both have got Shapeshift 2.7 and we are going to review it. I installed it on both the devices yesterday, I've been using it on both the phones and I have been mighty impressed. So we're going to do a quick review of Shapeshift OS on the K20 Pro. Before we do that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other and helping each other, so join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to PhoneOps, my name is Kalash, let's get going. All right, so what do we have here? We have Raphael, that is the Redmi K20 Pro with Shapeshift OS 2.7 Solosis official. Android 11 updated on the 8th of August, 2021. It does have some notes over here, rebased on OSS 3 thanks to TA TH779, OSS vendor based build, Android 11 firmware is mandatory for this build, otherwise bugs won't be entertained. Recovery persists with Widevine L1 if patched via MIUI, it will persist here as well. No support will be given on custom kernels. Firmware can be found here and here. Make sure you flash firmware of your respective region. Clean flash is mandatory. GApps is included out of the box. MIUI official build will be up in a few days, so that flavor of this particular ROM is gonna come as well. Try not to mirror builds, give some motivation to build. So please don't mirror or don't upload somewhere and share the link. Use the link that these guys have shared. It definitely supports them. Now over here, we do have something called a source change log because I don't see anything that is a device change log. And a source change log for this ROM is pretty, pretty long. Now when you boot on this particular ROM, you will notice that it comes with a very beautiful wallpaper, a very, very smart looking widget with weather and time and date and all the things that are there on the home screen to the left you do have Google discover which works like a charm now remember this is a AMOLED display with 60 Hertz refresh rate now for me personally the experience has been that when I'm specially on custom ROMs with this device this device I do get very very good experience and the moment I move to this one because this is 120 this is 120 and this is 60 Hertz I start feeling that the ROMs on this device are lagging but you have have to you know wrap your head around thinking that it's not lagging it's half the refresh rate of what you're experiencing on the other phones so you have to give it the benefit of doubt to me the k20 pro still remains a legend but that discussion is for another day now this rom boots with very very few applications and this particular camera app which does the job pretty pretty well as you can see and apart from this you can go ahead and install gcam if needed i have done a few benchmarks we will talk about that but if we go ahead and talk about the launcher over here this is a very very basic launcher which does have some custom customization available oh did it just crash on me hold on no so it's working just fine I've not had any issues at all let's see over here over here at the top you do have your quick tiles in which you have a ton of options just see because this is an AMOLED display you do have smart pixels you have gaming mode you have live display and you have things that are included from the customization menu sound search screen record so let's include this one you can enable or disable heads up notification you can enable or disable always on display as well right so if you go over here you can disable always on display a audio on charge or off so that's a pretty neat setting if you go to the screen recorder you do have an option to record using internal and external audio show touches on screen show dot show stop dot long press to move it lower quality for smaller file size bigger file size so let's actually start the audio recording you get a timer over here and then the recording starts you do get a voice prompt as well sound prompt now as you can see over here you don't really see a lot of stutters after enabling recording as well that means the performance is not impacted now i'll tell you this 
I did think that there are not many stutters while recording screen, but there are some stutters, very, very micro ones. So I don't know how bad this will impact your gaming experience, but do keep in mind that when you enable screen recording there, the UI does feel a little sluggish, but we have seen it in the past in a lot of custom ROMs that even after you enable screen recording, the gameplay doesn't get impacted, but your uh, UI starts becoming slug sluggish over here. So let's go ahead and stop the screen recording and you will notice immediately the screen has become much more responsive and much much more better, right? So that's everything about the UI and the icons that come with me. As you can see over here, you have something called as shape shift papers as well, in which you have pretty pretty beautiful wallpapers and this is the first release of that. So that is something good. Now if you go to settings over here, you will see that Shape Shift OS for the Redmi K20 Pro comes with a sort of a purple accent, which I really, really like. And over here you do have Shape Shifter. Now I would highly recommend you go ahead and check my video for the Poco X3 Pro because in that I have gone through each and every setting over here and there would be some differences which we will go ahead and check. So, you know, as far as the power button is concerned, no difference. Navigation, no difference. Gestures, well, double tap, everything is there. So you do have swipe to enable screenshot. There you go. So long screenshot and everything else working as expected. No changes over here. Quick settings, themer, heads up. So in themer, do you have anything related to FOD? Not really. Pulse visualizer, battery options, clock options, network indicator, status bar items, native controls, general options. Let's see, fingerprint error, vibration, fingerprint error, authentication, fingerprint icon. This feature is unsupported on FOD equipped devices. Okay, right, so because that is always there fingerprint on display there you go now this is the major change over here because this device the redmi k20 pro or rafael comes with a fod that means it gets its own dedicated menu animated fod icon xiaomi mi ui 1 ui 3 let's keep it that fingerprint animation wow you have a ton of options over there screen of fod disable night light when showing fod right so let's go ahead and lock this over here you will see this Okay, let's go ahead and lock this again. There you go. So you can go ahead and enable a lot of different animations. There you go. And the fingerprint scanner, I'll tell you this, the fingerprint scanner for me on this particular ROM has been working gorgeous. It's been working absolutely fine. I've not had any problems even in dark environments, even in, you know, leaving the phone idle for maybe two, three hours or sleeping overnight and in the morning, one try on the fingerprint display or FOD and it works absolutely fine. And that is something really, really exciting. Now, apart from this over here, you do have LED settings, which were there in that option as that particular device the poco x3 pro as well and you can add ga games to the gaming mode over here that brings us to a very very important question what kernel is this device made of so if you go to about if you go to android 11 you will see over here it does come with the perf plus kernel so i'm not sure if this is a perf enhanced version or it gives you better battery life or it gives you better performance but let's actually have a look at the benchmark numbers now actually when we talk about the benchmark numbers we will not able to run add to because it is giving us some error but we did manage to run cpu throttle test so let's have a screenshot of that all right great as you can see over here it does say cpu throttled 90 percent of its max performance after the device was allowed to cool so this is a pretty pretty decent score 178,883. now put it into perspective this device with snapdragon 8 860 the poco x3 pro scored similar numbers although this was throttling and this is not so very very good over there now moving on, we did run Geekbench as well. So let's have a look at our Geekbench numbers. So these are the numbers 740, 2427. Pretty, pretty decent score over there. Nothing, something out of the ordinary or anything of that sort. Now put basic things into perspective. 
you know, safety net passes out of the box, so you will not have any issues with the banking applications. Why do I L1? As it is clearly mentioned in notes, there is no problem as such. The fast charging works, the battery life is great, and I've not had any mistouch issues on this particular ROM as well. So similar experience with the Poco X3 Pro, similar experience with the K20 Pro, shapeshift os for both the devices doing a splendid job i'm pretty excited and as and when you know we start to keep getting updates this rom will just keep getting better let me know in the comment section what do you think about this detailed review of shapeshift os for the poco x3 pro and the k20 pro until the next one and the live stream keep smiling take care goodbye